The iPhone 6S and 6S Plus were released in September of last year. This review will bring you up to date on what's new and will give you an idea of whether it's still worth it three months on. The 6S Plus sports a 5.5 inch 1080p display with the same bright contrasting colours that Apple displays are used to. On the outside, the rounded edges from the iPhone 6 are still here, and the device is slightly taller, wider and thicker. The weight has also increased by a small amount, but you probably won't notice it. This time round, Apple has added a colour, rose gold, to the gold, silver and space grey previous colours from the iPhone 6. Also, following Bendgate, they have switched to using 7000 series aluminium to roughly double the strength of the phone. The iPhone 6S and S Plus sport a 64-bit A9 dual-core processor, which runs at about 1.85 GHz, which is plenty for its size. There is also 2 GB of LPDDR4 RAM, which is quite fast and probably enough. Apple is claiming that the new CPU is up to 70% faster than the previous one and the GPU 90% faster. Like always on new Apple smartphones, the animations are very smooth. On to the first new feature. 3D Touch is a new dimension into using your smartphone. By pressing and holding, you can open up context menus or other new features to provide extra information. There are two main functions, peak and pop. Peak allows you to preview content and open shortcuts with a hard press. An example of this is on the home screen. Pop opens preview content with a harder press, allowing you to peek then pop. Some examples of other uses of the 3D Touch includes racing games, where the 3D Touch is used for acceleration, as demonstrated in AG Drive. The second of the two new features is Live Photos. Live photos are mainly used as a demo for 3D Touch and could be called a gimmick. Demonstrated here on the lock screen, you can see as you push hard on the screen, it animates forwards, and as you let go, it animates backwards. By default, this is turned on for any photo you take and will record a few seconds before you take the photo and after. This means after taking a live photo, you can hard press and view what was just before you took it and just after in a kind of animated slideshow. Touch ID has been upgraded in the 6S and S Plus with a massive speed boost. When you first set up the phone, you'll notice that trying to open the lock screen using just the home button is almost impossible because the Touch ID reads your thumb so fast that it unlocks straight away. Alternatives to get into the lock screen include using your fingernail to press the Touch ID so it isn't activated, or just using the sleep-wake button on the side of the phone that many people forget about. The other benefit to using Touch ID is that many apps are now supporting it. For example, my banking app, NatWest, supports Touch ID for security, and so does LastPass. And finally, for the last new upgrade, the camera. Apple has finally switched to using a 4K capable video camera, allowing you to record 4K at 24 frames per second. The iPhone 6S Plus also now supports optical stabilization in video 
as well as in photos. Slow-mo has also had an upgrade, supporting 1080p at 120 frames per second. Three months on from buying this phone, the device still keeps up with performance. As with most Apple software, I have rarely noticed any glitches or bugs, which is something that Android struggles with. I find the large display on the 6S Plus to be quite useful for browsing the web and any other media consuming functions, and it's quite a decent phone overall. For anyone in the market looking for a new phone, and is used to using larger phones, I would go for the iPhone 6S Plus. For anyone maybe upgrading from the iPhone 4, I would probably go for the iPhone 6S standalone. That's all I have for my iPhone 6S Plus review. I hope this brought you up to date with all the current information, and I hope anyone in the market looking for a new phone has now made their decision. If you want to see more videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe or leave a comment down below. See you next time.